move this a little bit closer. I feel like I'm a really long way away from you to go there. Brilliant. Um, so, Ludwig, do you want to start maybe talking about a little about Sigfox, um, what sets you guys apart from, from other IoT companies? For sure. So, um, good morning for everybody. I just arrived in Lisbon, so I think that is a very uh, inspiring event. So, at Sigfox, what we aim to do from the inception from 2011, we had the idea that we need something else to tackle this huge IoT opportunity. And IoT is something pretty different regarding what you are doing, what we are doing today with mobile, getting more and more bandwidth to get more and more content on our mobile, on, on uh, our laptop. IoT is something relying on details. If we want to connect the real world to the virtual world, if we want to connect everything, every chairs, every bulb, every doorknob, everything, we need something else. And at Sigfox, what we are doing is an incredible bet. When we started with the, the, the vision and the ambition to, to cover the whole planet, it was to, to put antennas around the world, creating a net. And this net is so simple or so optimized in terms of energy and cost that it will connect every, everything, every sensors at the lowest cost and the lowest energy consumption. And our goal day after day is to reduce this cost, this is the complexity on the energy consumption to connect everything. So this is what is Sigfox. So a global network, a global net, I would say maybe, just to cover, to allow everybody in this room or in the world of industry and you know, whatever verticals there are to connect everything. This is because we need data. Everybody heard about uh, 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 sorry, artificial intelligence, how to get more and more data to maybe to foresee and to to prevent disease and to foresee what would be the next uh, big revolution in the world. So this is what is Sigfox. It's, uh, we are right now in 40 countries. We should be in 55 countries year-end. So we are creating a unique net, and we are tackling the, the details to deliver for you the best experience for IoT. OK, fantastic. And what, I mean, you must see all kinds of different examples. But for you, what's the most interesting example you've seen of the use of, of IoT? What is it enabling? What, what do you mean? Uh, the use cases or? Yeah, use cases. Yeah, yeah. I think use cases. That's a good question because people heard about IoT, about the wristband, about uh, applications that are quite uh, understandable by 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 uh, by the B two C market. But IoT is for me first tackling the industry opportunity because we need to provide ROI, return of investment when it comes to connect everything. I, I don't say that there is no. Uh, needs uh, for to connect smart home and smart uh, everything sensors but for the moment we to make to, to create the, the, the takeoff of the iot we need to to talk with people that would have pain on how to solve the pain with the roi return of investment so it means that it we can create everything because we have enough technology to connect everything but when it comes to to, to create roi it comes to see how, how much it costs to create uh, hardware to add some components in your devices to connect them to the cloud, how, how much it costs for the network, how much it costs for the application. So and when you start thinking about possibility, you see that this, there is a long list of details to, to clear. So back to your question, for me, the main opportunities right now are in asset tracking or asset monitoring. Everybody heard about Amazon, about all these uh, big companies trying to deliver packets, parcels every, every day around the world, tracking containers, cars, even animals. Everything has to be tracked. And sometimes, if, it, if you want to connect, for example, a, a, a letter, as we, we demonstrated uh, last, last month in, uh, in Prague, we were able to, to detect the openness of uh, an envelope. For, for 20 cents, we can send a message from the envelope to the cloud. This is what we need to achieve, what you need to, to achieve in terms of cost to, to connect everything. So uh, at the end of the day, it will improve the process for delivery. And there is also other concern about as something you heard about uh, water metering, uh, gas metering, and so on. There is concern about um, uh, an, um, agriculture, connecting uh, fields, or also um, leak detection. So I think there's it's so many applications of security, how to provide more security, how to provide a backup for 4G or LTE. Mm -hmm. This is part of the uh, usage we are mm -hmm. attacking. Security is a good point, actually, because that's one area that there are lots of security people that are deeply skeptical about IoT and, and sort of question the value of why we're connecting certain things to the internet. Do you think, how much of an issue is, is security within IoT? 
I think security, it's, it's something important to, to address. But I would like to, to tell you that there is a price for security. For example, I haven't mentioned a use case about uh, connecting fire sensors. Do you want to spend uh, additional dollar to get a high level of security for your fire sensor? I don't think so. So, but if you want to connect uh, uh, your home or sometimes you have a process you want to protect, maybe you, you are ready to, to put an additional dollar to get a higher level of security. So for me, we need to provide something uh, secure in terms of putting data from the device to the cloud. There is a big concern on the cloud side for our customers because on Sigfox we are only a net, so we are a pipe uh, sending data from the device to the to, to the, the customer cloud. But when you store data in the in the customer cloud, they, they need to protect this data because it, sometimes it, it is key to, to to have the security there. So once again, security is a big concern. And maybe something I would like to add is not completely in the IoT space, but. We are depending on wireless connection every day, like we are depending on oxygen, on electricity. So you heard about the DDoS attack. We, uh, so they have an attack with the, the, the Wi-Fi routers and so on. So also my concern having a, a second net, second network in parallel with other technology like Wi-Fi, LTE, and, uh, Bluetooth, and so on. If we have something in parallel, we can increase the security and reliability of connection. And this is also part of your, uh, the answer for your question. See, we need to secure transmission, we need to secure data into the cloud, but we need also to secure the way that we can sometimes uh, save life. For example, we, we have a network up and running in Mexico. You heard about the earthquake. At that time, we have uh, trouble with the, 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 the mobile because they have so many people calling at the same time for, for emergency. If we have a second network, being able to send small packets of messages, it can save life. And this is what we are talking at Sigfox also. Mm -hmm. So what, at the moment, aside from the security issues, what are the main things that are stopping the uh, success of IoT? What are the main limitations? Uh, for me, to, to make the IoT uh, a success for everybody, it's a long list, once again, of details. We, we have so many people creating like a, a fuzzy uh, understanding of the IoT market. And for me, it's why we are not, we, we talk about IoT for maybe you know, five to six years right now. But nothing really happened in, in, in high volume uh, at the big scale because there's a lot of noise and there is a no, lot of expectation that sometimes are, are failed because uh, it's something different that we used to do. When you are a, a telco, a mobile operator, you used to sell mobile phone, tablets, and something. It's quite always the same thing. But IoT, we are addressing so many different verticals that we need to work with professionals in different verticals to talk with them and to define where are their pain, what are the, the benefits for creativity. So at, at, at the end of the day, it means that what they can do with the data they will collect in their backend, how to, to, va to create value with this data is the main question. If there is no value, or if, if the technology can't provide you the, the right value, the margin, I would say, it doesn't make sense to, to connect devices because we know we can connect everything. But this is the reason why, for me, this market right, right now keep a little bit fuzzy and, and not has and not reached is the main uh, uh, maturity is because we, we haven't enough people thinking about ROI and not about only connecting devices or not only technology. Technology is, 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 is fine. It's, we can manage that. Mm -hmm. But the concern is talking with customers, talking with everybody to define the value. And the value is not only dollar. If you can save life, you can uh, save uh, uh, we can protect the environment if you can uh, create more additional uh, value for customers that they are changing from their business model because we are talking about uh, uh, digitalization of industries. So how they can benefit from that? So it's a, ROI is a, a mix of all these things to, to create, to, to define how much I can put in the connectivity to get margin, to get to be profitable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um this sounds an odd question, given that you work in IoT, but is there anything that you absolutely would say we should never connect to the internet? Never, you say? Yeah. <laughs> I think, in Maybe not. If, if you want me to, to do some uh, thing in the in, uh, in bracket, is I'm, f under, I'm feeling that we are not re living a real world. So I think we are all digital. So maybe it comes to, to if you want to, to demonstrate that, I don't know if it's true or not, but this is my, my, my vision only. It means that we need to connect everything. 
we need to create every dust in, in this world. And we will put all of this data into the cloud. Maybe we'll see something happening um, because we, we need to process the data. We need from uh, analytics, data analytics, and so on. As soon as we have all the, 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 the sensors in the world talking together in the cloud, maybe we'll see something appearing. It can disappoint us, maybe, I don't know. But this is why, and uh, to answer your question, I think everything should be connected. Mm -hmm. But th the goal is to reach close to zero, zero cost. And at that time, we will benefit from the data, and maybe we will le leverage the, the value of the data, and we'll have connectivity for free. But to achieve that, we need to have something really optimized. Uh, no more batteries, because batteries is the pain. If you imagine that we talk about uh, hundreds of billion devices connected in the world, if we have hundreds of billion batteries, how to deal with that? It's, 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 it should be a big mess and also for environment concerns. So for me, it's, we need to use the energy surrounding us, uh, being able to have enough energy to send the messages and the packets to the cloud, and we see what will happen. So I hope that this year, where you are sitting and everybody in this room, will be able to maybe two years from now to connect all of them for at least maximum $1 and to monitor the, uh, the, the, the mood, to monitor the, the um, how many people are sitting on, uh, in this, uh, this room, on, uh, in, in the cinema, everywhere, in the restaurant. Imagine if every shares are, are connected in the world, how, how much value you can bring from that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One, one um, point that's made about the Internet of Things is that it's a very fragmented market. Do you think that there needs to be a consolidation towards towards one technology, or what is your thought thinking on this? It's, it's, a, it's a good question. I think for me, uh, unfortunately, right now, as I said, it's quite a little bit fuzzy mm, situation that we have the telcos that they, they felt that they, they will drive the IoT market, and we come from nowhere at Sigfox, and we, we, we told to the market that we need something else. Not because we are better than them, but because IoT is something different. But at the end of the day, there are requirements for very optimized solution, and we need some time bandwidth. So we need to collaborate in the middle. I think at Sigfox, we are targeting from zero to one kilobit, so very low bandwidth on 4G, 5G, maybe tomorrow on the LDIoT, LTEM, and so on. They will target something between 10 kilobit on, on, uh, on higher. So we need to, to one, one day to connect all together and create a global value for, for customers and for industry, for what happened in the mobile industry with Apple and Android. They create an uh, amazing opportunity for everybody to create mobile apps. We should do the same, and we will do, for sure, the same for IoT. We will see Snapchat, WhatsApp, whatever uh, application, the, the same in the IoT industry. But to do that, we need to simplify everything. We need to create like an IoT store where you can co start from zero with $50 in your pocket and create your first object, connect it to the, to, the, to the network, and create value as soon as you have a ramp up you can be the successful company, the, the, as I said, the WhatsApp of the IoT. This is what we need to create. Mm -hmm. And we, so for that, I, I think, and I, I ask everybody in, uh, at the telco to talk together and say how we can tackle this opportunity together. Mm -hmm. in, in the UK, uh, I can't speak so much about the French market in this regard, but in the UK, we have a lot of complaints about broadband being slow and the government has tried to, to improve it. How far is that holding back the progress of Internet of Things, slow internet connection? You mean what, what UK? I, haven't I mean, before. so I mean um, your uh, internet provider, so as in the, the speed of the connection that you get from your internet provider, is that something that is affecting the progress of IoT? No, I, I don't think so. I, think, I don't think so. The, you mean that the, the, the back hole uh, of internet for, for IoT? What it mm -hmm. is for, for me, we have enough bandwidth for, for IoT today. Mm -hmm. we, we, I, I don't think that we will need more, for, for IoT, I say, uh, more, more bandwidth in terms of the inter internet back on uh, All the existing technology are, are fine for me to, to address this IoT opportunity. Mm -hmm. What we need, as I said, is to, to take care about details on how to, to create also sensors, because as I said, it, when it comes to connect the real, world, the real world to the virtual world, we need a lot of sensors and cheap sensors. Because if they, are, if they are expensive, we can't collect the data. We are working with a company in, uh, in, in Germany uh, monitoring the, the pollution. And what we are doing today, we are putting a lot of pollution sensors in the city, and we connect all these pollution sensors to our cloud, and we are managing the traffic lights right now. And also with, uh, with Waze, we should be able to 
to improve the, or to reduce the pollution level because it's, it's an application is a smart city application but it's the data need to be open we need to put all this, the the pollution data sensors into the cloud and process the data manage the traffic line and be able one day to even with the same traffic reduce the, um, the the pollution because we'll allow people to change their world not only in terms of uh, the, the shortest uh, path between point e and point b but also balancing the the, the traffic to 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 lower the, the pollution this is something we need also for, for IoT. So this is um, no. part of my question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we've heard a lot here at Web Summit about um, Alexa, Google Home, and voice services. Can you see an intersection between Internet of Things and voice services? Yes, for sure. Uh, yeah, for me, the, 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 the connection is in the cloud with uh, in artificial intelligence. We need to make the, the object talking. This is what we, we are also doing. I think every object, when they send data, it can be similar to a, a talk, to, to, to sentences, to words. So I think if we do that, we should be able to, 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 to collect voice uh, like Alexa and this kind of stuff on uh, object also. So we need to, to make the object, the object talking. If you heard about the, what we are doing with the Six Fox Foundation, we are making the rhinos talking. So we should be we should allow every object to talk, and if they talk, they can discuss with the, the voice system. So this is maybe why, where I'm thinking that the, the, where is the connection between the uh, voice system for on the IoT? What's the most exciting use case you have seen within Internet of Things? One that makes you feel excited? I have something which excites me, but I'm not sure that it will excite you, but uh, yeah. I, I can tell you. <laughs> So for me, you know that vibration, vibration is key. You, we have vibration sensor in our mobile and wristband and so on. So we can monitor the, the, our activity, how, long, how many steps we are doing, how many, how many calories we are burning. So these sensors, are, for me, are critical, are key for IoT. Because if you listen the vibration for whatever, you, for example, an electrical engine, you put a, a vibration sensor in, on it, like only sticking the, the sensor on, on the electrical engine, or you monitor the vibration. You register the vibration for one day, one week, one month, one year. And at the end of the day, you will manage pattern of vibration. So it means that for that, you need a lot of bandwidth, a lot of storage, a lot of processing power to, to define these patterns. But as soon as you have done that, you can embed this pattern in, into a tiny CPU but at low energy, low cost, on monitor the vibration of uh, electrical engine or whatever else, and pr provide uh, predictive maintenance. So it's huge because if you do that, even in, in this room, in, in, on your chair, we can detect your if you are excited, if you are enjoy, and so on, with vibration. So vibration is it's uh, for me is the DNA of our mood of our life. So we can transfer this vibration into data, into services, into pretty maintenance, what, whatever. So this is for me what is exciting. Mm -hmm. It means that we need to mix once again uh, data analytics on IoT. And it, it will be done on, uh, on the cloud, but at the end of the day, at the edge, we have uh, tiny processors that will deliver the, the value. And um, finally, where do you see the IoT market going in the next five to 10 years? So long term into the future, what, what will the landscape look like? As I told you, we will see that the, the, the real world disappearing in, in, in a, like in, in a cloud so because we'll have connected more and more things. So there will be n the, the border between the real life and the virtual life will be a little bit uh, blurred. And uh, this is, for me, the, the, I think we, we'll, we'll have more and more things connecting us. We, we, we'll, we'll own uh, hundreds of devices connected in, in, our, in our lives. So one day we have our environment that will take decision for us and we will make, take time or more time thinking about um, the future and uh, enjoying uh, maybe a moment we all together because many, many things will be done out of our reflection. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for, but please say thank you to Ludovic for uh, sharing his thoughts with us today. Thank, thank you. you. And have a good day. Thank you.